the September yeah. 11th release language lasted 10 or 11 uh, days, approximately? It's a little over 11 days. I mean, almost 12 complete days. When we, people had dealt with it, and that was... No, when they, didn't, they hadn't dealt with it, but they were no longer expressive. They were now starting I to see. internalize and, and get back into some tension mode and try and, in, and absorb it all. But the huge gasp of the horror of it all was pretty much out by then. And yet you find this five-month period to be gasp and a horror of it all kind of a thing? Or some level of release language. That is to say we're all responding to new events. Okay. Back with the pie. That's human that comment. I urge you to subscribe. Uh, it's a remarkable service they provide. I read every part. Part zero is due. Where is part zero? Doggone it, where is it? Uh, well, yeah, it should be up there Thursday morning, we're hoping. You guys, Thursday at the afternoon yeah. latest. They're so well written, and you do, uh, you just interface with the data so uh, smoothly, and it, may, it just makes perfect sense. Uh, again, I, uh, I I look forward to uh, next month, I guess. I, we, you know, it's curiosity and all the rest of it, but... Well, you know, we've got to got to do something. You know, might as well keep busy and enjoy ourselves as we go along here. Yeah. What about food uh, for this winter? Uh, we talked about energy. Anything more on the food yeah, crisis? Yeah, we have, seems we to have be a lot of, of uh, out of the headlines now, but that doesn't mean anything. It'll be back, and not only will it be in terms of rationing and shortages, but part of that's going to be driven by uh, we're, we're getting the shortage aspect, and then under in supporting sets, we've got a collapse of the food chain within the ocean. And then we're having breakage of the food chain relative to grains. So probably it's going to relate to uh, the bee issue and the lack of pollinators. But, but not uh, the floods of Iowa. Uh, this, that was that that's was a, isolated. That's a minor, minor relative com compared to what we're seeing in the future. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. we think that the revolution stuff we've been seeing for 2009 and the summer of hell in 2009, all of that may, or a lot of that may be driven by a major food crisis which occurs over the winter and early early spring. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, so we are talking shortages. We're, we're talking impacts at weird kind of levels, such as, oh, for instance, uh, ingredients for supplements not being available due to um, issues in some other country relative to that particular part of the bio. Not, not the Codex Alimentarius thing they, where they're trying to outlaw so we're, supplements. We're seeing all of those, and that, those control mechanisms are going to be desperately pushed. Uh -huh. But uh, in the end, uh, the, most of those are gone by the end of 2010 as we get into that particular set of chaos. Yeah, the, the powers that be are, are losing their grip rapidly or are surrendering it. I mean, there are those who are going to say that they're just going to sort of withdraw to their holes in the ground and, and await out whatever 2012 brings. All right, now that's another thing that we're going to spend time on. And by the way, Cliff will be with us as uh, a regular once a month, the first Monday of each month, uh, the last hour of the program. But this tw this 2012 thing is, is um, <laughs> very it's concerning. Sick, isn't it? yeah. yeah, and it's being, boy, it's being marketed, it's being merchandised. And, and we know, all of you know, that the powers that be are going to not miss this golden opportunity to do something. On a huge scale. I mean, this is this has fallen right into their laps. Of course, they knew about it long ago, but they are going to use this like uh, you've never seen anything used before. The drumbeat of, of of 2012 is going to become louder and louder and louder. Well, we're uh, seeing the effects of it already. And look at your previous guest here. I caught a few minutes there, and the number of times that he was expressing how he feels about this pending and. Uh, mm -hmm. potential revealing, if you will, mm -hmm. he's getting extremely excited about it, and that that feeling is permeating a large segment of the population. This is, I mean, you, you can, uh, the Christian fundamentalists are, are going to be uh, rap, you know, rapturizing about it. There you go, yeah. Uh, and that's one group. I mean, uh, the, the New Age people will be another. Uh, this is going to go on and on. I, I don't, I, I'll tell you, fasten your seatbelts, folks, because... <laughs> Believe it or not, and some people say that the Mayans simply ran out of room on that stone. That was that was it. And well, they're, now they're surmising they're a lot of things. I mean, I, right. I, I don't have an answer for you. I can just tell you what I hear. Well, the, uh, of course, there's the the Aztec uh, sunstone, which is in the main area of the museum in Mexico City, uh -huh. which, from which we get the original interpretation of the four previous ages and then the current age and the shift that occurs on 2012. Mm -hmm. But we also have all these really curious synchronicities. Uh, for instance, there's 30 
63 degrees in your standard Mason, uh, if you will, hierarchy, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you multiply that by the number of nautical miles per degree on this planet, 60.039, you end up with 2012.9. <laughs> down American public is going to be putty yeah. in the hands of anyone who wants to really manipulate and massage this thing. I, I don't... Well, they're going to have to go through some rather difficult times. Uh, as we all know, when we come to getting into our personal level of enlightenment, opening up our eyes and saying, geez, everything I've been told about the world is wrong, I'd better start educating myself. Mm -hmm. Those are not fun years. And mm -hmm. you run into all kinds of problems trying to do this on your own. Now, personally, I say don't let anybody be your guru because down that road, madness know about people these days. Really good myself. advice. Please don't myself follow. Myself included. I don't want to be anybody's guru. We just give you a little bit of hint as to where to find, you know, where to put your feet on the road. Don't follow anyone, whether it's a, a, a the television program, a talk show host. It doesn't matter. You've got to learn. We have to learn to be our own uh, sages and follow yeah. that inner voice. Do our it's research all... and, and let it percolate and, and, and you know, don't, don't pick up other people's recorded messages and, and live them. It doesn't work. Yeah, not very well. Mm -hmm. And as we'll all discover as we go forward, I'm sure. Well, uh, 2012 looks to be the uh, the greatest show on earth coming soon. To a can you imagine Hollywood? How many films are on the on the drawing board now? How many keyboards now, are probably? A real curious thing, though, mm -hmm. isn't it curious? Uh, no, uh, this is this is atypical. Usually when they have this kind of an event that they can work off of, mm -hmm. there are many years out because they want to be able to milk it, they want to have the sequel, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a planned little procedure. Mm -hmm. We do not have enough time. That's what's so so funny. They apparently have been clamped down on putting out the word about this or speculating beyond certain levels. Really? And, and the mere fact that we don't have dozens and dozens and dozens of 2012 movies out there. Well, not is, yet. It's and even even so, you can't get that many out in the, in the four years that are remaining. Well, I hadn't thought about it quite like that, but that that is true, and it's uh, very interesting. I I don't know. I there were, well, there were a lot of scripts, by the way. Thousands. Oh, it had to Thousands be. I mean, there are probably oh. keyboards clattering away right now. People yeah. writing their 2012 yeah. script. Maybe you and George and I should just do something modest, like T-shirts. <laughs> There you go. I survived 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or did I survive 2012? <laughs> I'll find out later. Yeah. That's, that, that's Let me have my coffee now, and we'll decide in a half an hour. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, well, it. it well, but let's the, get through this winter. Let's yeah. get through this winter, and then we'll decide how, how we want to deal with things. These Speaking are the wish because mm -hmm. we don't have very much time here. Uh, West Coast, probably in so far as uh, Vancouver and the slip. Slip strike fault up there, mm -hmm. going all the way down the west coast, is probably our, our best site for our December 10th, 11th, or 12th earthquake. And Bob Hitt, the astrologer fellow, tells me that the 12th is like just chock full of interesting alignment of the planets astrologically. 
biologically, which of course also coincides with hyperdimensionally, which puts the strain on everything. So the mm. 12th may well, the, be the, the magnetic the, the magnetic issue on the solar system also uh, is yeah. certainly part of it. All right, and now <clears throat> the can, the Canary Islands, yeah. the volcano. Uh, yeah. We know about that, that it's cracked on the uh, on the western, our, if we looked at it, our western side. Not on yeah. the uh, fractured. Ex, it's fractured on the west side of the, uh, the, the actual volcano, the crater. Um, not on the eastern, but it doesn't matter. That's plenty big. Now, would your research be able to determine in advance if a small group of maniacs were to, to hand carry a, a small nuke and kind of throw it in that crater and light it off? I don't know. That's, a, uh, see, that's not a natural... It would result in a natu quote, natural occurrence, a big piece of land mass right. falls into the ocean, a uh, 500-foot wave, whatever. Uh, but can we look at it this way? We, it's not that we're tuning into the event per se. Seemingly, I mean, our best, really our best guess as to what's happening mm -hmm. is that we're tuning into the people's brain waves and they're reading or coming across the information about the event in the future. So it's mm -hmm. as though we've got millions upon millions of people whose brains are slightly tuning into what they're going to be reading about the event uh, or seeing on TV or whatever after it occurs, and we're picking up some of that language. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting the event per se. We're getting the language that appears after it. So if that were known mm -hmm. uh, sometime afterwards, yeah, we could probably pick it up. But if it was never known, for instance, that it was a bunch of lunatics that actually caused it, then we would have no way of knowing, nor would we necessarily show up any, any significant information that direct. Makes Interesting. Sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cliff, thank you, and uh, talk to you on the 6th. I know you've got your food ready. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly starting on it. I've, I'm starting yeah. to scarf up pies like mad. Yes, Mary and Barry at the moment. <laughs> That's good. Enjoy. Take okay. care. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Sure thing. Okay. Bye. Halfpasthuman.com is the website. Cliff High is the guest. I'm Jeff Rents. Thank you for being here. It's fascinating times. And we'll be back in 21 hours.